On the show today, the world's number one EV in 2021 is out and it's confirmed once again to be the Model 3. I've got all the details on that story, so stay tuned. Neo opened their 800th battery swapping station. Uh, Mercedes-Benz are investing in solid-state batteries. Those stories and more coming up on EV News Briefly. Your daily rapid-fire insight into the world of electric cars and how we power them. My name is Martin Lee. I go through every EV story so you don't have to. And join me later on the longer audio-only version of the podcast for the whole story on all of today's news. But if you're in a hurry, check out our quick look now at what's happening. We'll start down under and the electric car boom in Australia is getting real. 24,000 plugins were sold last year in 2021. It's still a small market share. It's gone up from 0.78 percent in 2020 to 2.39% last year. So, you know, less than the US, more than Japan, but it still is very small compared to the numbers we're going to get onto in a little bit from Europe. Some data being released by the Electric Vehicle Council put Tesla's Model 3 at 15,000 sold last year out of the 24,000. But for some reason, the official registration data, two sets of that data, showing that it's nearer 12,000. Why the 3,000 Model 3 discrepancy. That's a 25% difference, quite a big number. Can't work it out uh, today, but I'll carry on looking into that. If it's the bigger number, by the way, Model 3 would then uh, depose the Toyota Camry after a 28-year winning streak in the midsize segment in Australia. Just amazing, really. Not sure why those two data points are different. Someone screwed up. Someone down under. Hey, Aussies, what are you doing? You flaming galahs? Get it right! Let's move on and we'll talk about the European plug-in market just surging let's look at december first of all before we do the full year december plug-in car share was 29.3 percent we're all friends let's call it 30 30 percent monthly plug-in share of hybrids and full evs 278,000 vehicles is the raw number just amazing. Some of the standout countries, Norway, 90%, Netherlands, 64%, Sweden, 61%, Denmark, 57% plug-in share. We love you, according to JTO Dynamics. What about the whole year, though? Well, in 2021, in the European market, which is the 28 countries we're talking about, uh, plug-ins were 2.25 million registrations. It's a lower number. It's 19% of the total market when you average it over the year, unlike December, which was a stellar month. But hey, look, we'll take that. That's a fifth of the entire market in Europe. And one of the reasons why is we have so many EVs on sale here. Partly that's because of the EU CO2 rules, which meant a lot of the car makers launched EVs and diverted supply to the EU. Look what politicians can do when they have their heads screwed on. So we have a huge choice of EVs, more than most outside of China, and it's really paying dividends. It's a fifth of the entire market. It's amazing. What about December alone? Well, for the second time, I can tell you the Model 3 from Tesla was the best-selling passenger car. Not the best-selling electric car, although of course it was. The best-selling car of any type in the month of December. 27,358 units. Now, when Berlin opens, it's going to smooth out that kind of highs and lows because the ships arrive from Shanghai and then we get these wild months and then some months are really quiet for Tesla. Tesla is now bigger in Europe in the month of December than all of Kia, all of Citroën, all of Fiat. <laughs> It's amazing, right? And we'll go to the world figures, which is the headline story I teased you with. The second half of the year was really big for EVs and records being set all over the place. If you look at the quarterly average of the last quarter, the Model Y actually did better than the three. And again, try and smooth out those import numbers into Europe. And Model Y, 52,000. Model 3, 47,000. So maybe that's the last time that the Model 3 can do so well now that Model 3, Model Y is arriving and it'll be coming out of Berlin, hopefully really soon as well. Plus, there's so much competition in that segment. You're looking at BMW iX3, the Xpeng P5, the Mustang Mach-E, Polestar 2, Polestar 3 coming, by the way, the Korean cars, Ionic 5, EV6, 
And so I'll pop a link to Clean Technica in the show notes if you want to have a look at that story and the data in full. But in the final table, Model 3 leading the way. Fourth consecutive bestseller award. Over half a million deliveries, uh, as you can see on screen right now. And that could be the last time it, uh, it's number one in the world. But a massive, massive achievement. All right, moving on. Next, Sandy Munro, the teardown specialist. Four years ago, had some pretty negative things to say about Tesla. But since then, he seems to uh, have changed his tune. One of Elon's biggest fans at times. Uh, he self-confessed, made a fortune from investing in the stock. So, hey, he's honest about that. And he says that tearing down the Model S plaid is going down well so far. The clips and trim are easy to remove. Didn't like a rear window seal that wasn't fitted correctly, letting in uh, too much air and uh, and some other issues as well. The rear seat squab itself, a, a poor angle, but I couldn't work out whether he meant as in it was designed at a poor angle, it was fitted poorly. Either way, I'll pop a link to that if you want to start watching Sandy Monroe tear apart a Model S plaid. If only he would put it back together. At the end, I'd happily be the recipient of that. Now we'll talk Cybertruck spotted charging at Giga Texas, which is odd. These so-called leaked photos keep coming out. Now, look, you know the way it works. Cars are kept under lock and key unless car makers want you to see them. They want you to see them to build hype and momentum. It means the cars are coming out soon. And these so-called leaks keep coming out of Tesla at the moment, which is why I said last week that I think there's a chance that Elon Musk's earnings call kind of uh, sort of playing down of the Cybertruck, saying, oh, hopefully sometime next year. Hopefully, was what he said. Could be the world's biggest bluff. The best sandbag ever. <laughs> it could be in three months' time. They're like, oh, yeah, by the way, Cybertruck's ready, like they did with Model Y. Hey, I'm just saying I'm suspicious because they keep releasing, sorry, they keep leaking photos. This time it's charging, and it is on the rear wheel arch on the left-hand side of the vehicle where we thought the charger was. Next, we'll talk about some breaking news coming out of Norway today, and that is the website lbill24.no saying that they've got pictures of non-Tesla EVs charging on Norwegian superchargers on the CCS2 plug. Uh, somewhere north of Oslo called Nebenes, also somewhere else in Oslo, uh, an Audi e-tron charging and more as well. I'll pop a link to that in the show notes if you'd like to see more of those pictures. Could it be a mistake? Could it be a preview? That Netherlands trial expanding next into Norway? Maybe. We'll see. In California, Tesla's push for telematics rates has been rejected by the commissioner there. Elon Musk saying on the earnings call that they're pushing California to allow them to have telematics-based car insurance. Now, the state's insurance commissioner tweeting uh, at Elon Musk, reportedly telling investors he's pushing very hard to change the rules on telematics for California. Push all you want. We won't bend on protecting consumer data and privacy, he said. I understand that. I understand that there's issues around people knowing where you've been, at what time, the exact movements of your car, where's that data held, is it secure? We know China keep uh, Tesla keep data in China as they have to because they sell cars in China and that's what the Chinese government want you to do, to store the data on their servers. So I get all those concerns, but really if somebody wants to use a different insurance company, well, they can. Like Until it's all insurance companies using telematics data, in which case I mean, if you choose not to, you might be uninsurable, Either just let them do it, and if people have an issue with privacy, and I'm a bit on the fence about that. I don't want people knowing where I am all the time just to save a couple of dollars here and there, but it might be a big price difference. Then they can just choose to insure with someone else. Why not let Tesla do it? doesn't seem a big deal to me. All right, moving on. Neo's 800th power swap station is up and running now as of last week. In the last month, well, the last 33 days, 100 swap stations have been built what? Crazy things happen in China. And from the 800 now, they're going to get to 1300 by the end of the year. Holy bazookas, Neo are really expanding with battery swapping. Now, if you'd like to see a drag race between some 
big old chunky boys, then you can check out what Car Wow did. Normally they're racing some lightweight sports cars, but this time Audi e-tron S, so Trimotor, Model X, Mercedes-Benz EQC, BMW iX. These are all lardy bums, very heavy cars. The lightest one's two and a half thousand kilos. That's five and a half thousand pounds. And so a battle of the heavyweights, you could say, kind of interesting to watch because, well, one of the sponsors of this podcast, RSEV, uh, provided two of the cars, the Tesla and the Audi e-tron S. So Thank you, Richard Simons, for doing that. You can check out the uh, the results of how it all went in the link I'll pop to BMW blog in the show notes. Next, Mercedes-Benz. Uh, we can call them that because, well, as of now, really, there is no more Daimler. It's now Mercedes-Benz after a rebranding. Investing in uh, solid-state battery technology. The company's called Prologium. It follows up their investment in another solid-state developer in the US uh, called Factorial Energy. So you can see that they are lining things up for the second half of the decade where perhaps these more expensive cells could be used in their higher-end models for a better range, more efficiency, faster charging, etc. And finally, more Floridians are going electric. 58,000 Floridians are driving EVs now, a number that puts the state second in the US behind California. I didn't know that Florida was number two. But there are concerns, things like uh, the grid infrastructure there is a mix of public utilities governed by the state board and how that gets reinforced, who's going to pay for that, etc. And also the gas taxes. They predict that there's going to be an 11% drop in fuel taxes by 2040. You won't have any fuel taxes in 2040. Like that massively needs revising now, Florida. If you think in the next 20 years, all you're going to lose is 11% in fuel taxes, I got some news for you about how quickly EVs are coming. Yeah, you might want to have a look at that uh, a spreadsheet again pretty quickly. Well, that's our podcast for today. Thank you very much for watching EV News briefly. Uh, hopefully, in a shorter time than the usual podcast, you get you uh, get you up to speed on electric vehicles. Online weekdays, Monday to Friday. Uh, if you don't subscribe to the YouTube channel yet, what are you waiting for? It's free, and everyone loves free stuff, so hit subscribe. And if you want to support the show... You haven't got to check out Patreon, uh, p a t r e o n dot com slash ev news daily. You know, thousands of people consume this every single day, but about two hundred and fifty hardcore or so people make this show happen. Want to be one of them? Get your name in the show notes. You can do that if you want to check out the Patreon page, and of course, if you want to check out the podcast feed and hit subscribe in your podcast app. Have a good one, and I'll catch you later for the full ev news daily.